it and across the galaxy, this is the Darren Sanders Show! Whatever time you're watching this, no matter where in the world, it is probably still too late for my next guest, who has been doing many, many mornings for many, many years. Uh, Sam Mack. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good to see you. I've always wanted to do one of those Tonight Show style walk-ons. So, uh, thank you for making my dream come true. Should, yeah. should I add music? Um, an applause track. Can we do it again? Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, okay, we'll, we'll do a take really, two. Um, okay. Some really authentic sounding applause. Okay. Like, I mean. Yeah, yeah, no problem. And, and, uh, and, and the band will fire up too. Yeah. My next guest, TV sensation, Sam Mack, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great to see you. You too. You too. Thanks for coming. Um, what an absolute honour to be on the show. I'm here to promote my new book, um, which is um, not selling very well. Have you? So, uh, uh, yeah, I look very different now that I've grown my hair back, but yeah. um, it's really funny, and I'd really appreciate it if your viewers could purchase The, uh, the Life of Sam Mack Mal. It's not a bad book, that. Mm. Have, you, have you thought about doing your, uh, your, your story? Or are you, are you too young to do it? Um, I'd love to. Well, I don't know, because these days, I think Justin Bieber released uh, an autobiography or a best of really? when he was 19. Um, so I don't think the age Jesus. is an issue. The wonder years. Yeah, exactly. The and golden that's, years it, of my career. It's more, yeah. what, what have I got to say? I think, yeah. you know, I've been doing the Sunrise Weather gig for a year and a half. I think if I do that for a long enough period, yeah. maybe there is a book in it, because there's certainly a lot of stuff that happens on the road. And... The, the main thing for me is having a good pun title mm. if I'm going to do a book. Like, you know, yeah. um, whether you like it or not is, is my working yeah. title at yeah. the moment. Yeah. Uh, Under the Weather is also another good one, quite accurate at times, weather. or Sam Maccurate. Oh, uh, weather Beaten. Yeah, that's it. That's good. <laughs> what so, so maybe, maybe I will one day. Did you know about the weather before you got the weather gig? Um... Or did you have to, like, because uh, you being an Adelaide person, who was it? The, the, there's a famous Adelaide weatherman. Uh, there was Keith, Xavier Minicon, Keith no, Conlon. Keith, not Keith, Keith Conlon, no, no. Keith. Who was it? But he used to come on at the end of the news and always talk about Hector Pascals. Oh, yes, I do have, know who you're referring to. I can picture him, but I can't. Yeah, this is really bad. Two Adelaide yeah, guys who can't name yeah, an Adelaide, Adelaide person. Don't worry, I've got a whole list of Adelaide uh, people, famous people from Adelaide here to go through later. But, uh, oh, good. Yeah. All six of them. Yeah, no, there's quite a list. There is quite a list. Um, yeah, well, but, in answer to your question... Do you know what a Hector Pascal is? Um, I don't think it's... I th he was the only guy that has ever said it on any... Yeah any weather channel in the world and people just people just nod and went mm, Hector Pascal's what, what are they yeah. is that what your show is you have me on and just grill me for half an hour in different about terms news. of weather yeah, seeing yeah. if I know them what's a degree no, no, um, no, no not at all well look no. I um, I think like anyone you know the weather affects everyone's life yeah. in some capacity so I had a, an interest in it but I certainly wasn't an expert yeah. and I don't claim to be an expert now yeah. but with my role I'm certainly learning as we go and, and when you have like weather events like the cyclones I actually went to the cyclone yeah. you do learn a lot on the job but I guess the thing to remember with my role and anyone who watches the show and sees you know what I do on it is yeah. it's weather you know yeah. yes I'll tell you what you need to do you need a jacket today etc but really it's you know I'm bungee jumping and, yeah. or I'm at the town fair learning about cheese and the good thing is you <laughs> and you don't have to be right yeah. if the weather's wrong yeah you come back the next day and just go, well, oh, sorry, it was yeah. 13 yesterday, not 14. And I probably shouldn't yeah. say this because it could yeah. ultimately put me out of a job, but yeah. anyone can just check an app on their phone if they want to know the weather. Could do. Days. Just cut that bit out. Yeah. <laughs> and we're back. Um, Adelaide's where you started uh, radio. Yes. Correct? Is that straight from school into radio? Um, not really. I... I actually worked in a call centre in Adelaide for, yeah. for a couple of years while I was studying at Adelaide University yeah. and in a sense that's... What were you studying to do? What did you I want to do? I was studying psychology okay. but I was definitely more interested and more passionate about the media subjects. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of media subjects and I was like, oh, this is where I want to go and even while I was at school I was making a lot of videos instead of doing, you yeah. know, a 5,000 word, I would do like a 10 minute video presentation. So yeah. I definitely was interested in that. Yeah. Yeah. When I went to school there, we had no... There was, Media studies had just started as a subject, so there was no history of it when I went to school. And so the teacher said, well, we've really got nothing to go on in past yeah. scores. So myself and a mate got A's in everything we did in media studies because there was, <laughs> there was no comparison. That's to, great. Yeah, we started the school radio station. Awesome. Yeah, a. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. Um, and did you keep in contact with that guy that you were doing the, the radio show with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. We were mates, uh, mates lifelong uh, friends. But oh, uh, yeah, school buddies. So uh, no, it was, uh, it, was, it was an interesting what, what thing. But, but I never... Show? 
it was just the Findon High School radio lunchtime bit, show. Bit you know? wordy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shorten that down. Yeah, well, it wasn't it wasn't the day before the whole Osteria. And oh, no, actually, no, Osteria had just come out, so we we weren't just Sando and Mako and you know whatever <laughs> yeah, else yeah. you had to and do. The goose or yeah, some yeah, sort of, you know, sort of the turtle stuff. and the yeah. frog for the yeah. morning. Yeah. yeah, well, I went to uni and um, and I knew that I was interested in media, but. I think I worked out pretty quickly within a year or so that I didn't want to be a psychologist. Even yeah. though I was studying, I was like, mm, I'm vaguely interested in this, but not enough to make it my career. And yeah. um, I was working at the call center and SAFM in, in Adelaide at the time had a competition, which was who wants to be a co-host on air, oh. um, a word play on who wants to be a millionaire. Yeah. And I, my auntie actually said, hey, I'm going to enter you in this competition. I said, sure. And then the way that it worked was you would have one day on air and then the listeners would vote for their favourite. So they had okay. 10 people over two weeks, including oh. Limo. Yeah. He was one of the um, contestants. And... I went on air, I played guitar, I wrote a few terrible puns, basically the same stuff I still do now. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. and it's, just that, it's just that fine line, isn't it, to get paid yeah. and, yeah, you know, and not... Yeah, absolutely, and yeah. be the weird guy on the train. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> Very fine line. Yeah. I like to think I could be both. Yeah. Um, so what happened was uh, I you know, went in the competition and on the last day um, they announced the winner and because, as I said before, I had a call centre is where I worked, oh. um, the big boss who loved me, Maria, said to the entire call centre, which was basically middle-aged women, yeah. when you're not on calls today, you need to call 131060 and oh, really? Sam in the co-hosts on air competition. So I had an entire call centre. Basically, I rorted my yeah. way to yeah. win the competition. The prize was to go to Edinburgh in Scotland, yep. review acts in the Edinburgh Fringe, and then when I came back, I, I had a job. So I scammed my way into the industry. It was perfect. How did Limo get in then? If it's in the um, same contest. <laughs> sexual favours. Okay, I mean, right, anyone right, who knows Limo will know that that's true. Yeah, you'd be like, oh, I've got a friend in India. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to go call centre, I'm going to up you with call centre calls. Yeah. <laughs> You moved around a lot with radio too. You were co-hosting, hosting, panelling or being part of teams yeah. and, and all that sort of stuff. Then to move to Sydney, what, what drove you to do that? Um, I, I really felt that in Adelaide there, there just wasn't enough opportunities for what I wanted to do. I've mm. been doing my own community TV show in Adelaide called Sam Max Single Bed with mm. you know uni friends and mates and people at the radio station. Somehow with, with that show, like I at C31 at the time, the mm. bosses there would be like, hey, this is really interesting what you're doing here. And, and some of it's good, some of it's not good. And like very yeah. honest feedback. Yeah. And they're like, just out of interest, how do you have Sean McAuliffe on this week's episode? How do you have all these big names? Yeah. While I was working at SAFM, right. I would do an interview with him for the radio. Then I'd say to Sean McAuliffe, have you got two minutes to shoot a little thing for this community show? So okay. we'd go out the front of Green Hill Road oh, yeah. and yeah. shoot it. And most of them were more, more than up for it. Yeah. So, yeah, it well, was pretty much the same. I get guests on here. Well, yeah. I just email and or, or you just ask. Try, and, don't you? Yeah, and and you know, I've I've had some really long shots which don't respond. You know, yeah. big big names, big overseas names. I just thought <laughs> I'll you, just get on the can tweet. Can you share some I of those just, names? Like, who have you actually? Because I know you've got I, I quite a resume in terms of your acting career. Oh, yeah, I would, You're I in the <laughs> November Rain film clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guns yeah, and yeah, Roses, right in the whatever, background. No, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people were. Yeah, the truth is that that song. I'd heard it so many times that day. They asked us. To, I was in the wedding scene for the, the um, yeah the one. big scene. Yeah, but then they asked us. They said, "Who wants to come back tomorrow and do the funeral scene?" And I just yeah. went, "Oh fuck, no, mate! This song's doing my head in. <laughs> this song will go nowhere." <laughs> so anyway, don't ask me about music and what's going to be a hit. So, yeah. Um, so who were some of the um, big name guests? Oh, you had uh, I would have liked Alyssa Milano to be on yeah, it. Yeah, nice. Uh, Michael Douglas. Yeah, would have been good. Do they but, uh, even get back to you? Nah, or? nah. So yeah. I don't know if they even run their own Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> I think they do. Looking at Twitter, I think they probably do. Yeah. But um, yeah, You're probably you, you pretty gotta... overwhelmed that I got back to you. you I was, I was. Yeah, Sam Mack, I thought, well, you are you are the hardest guest to get because because yeah. your schedule. You are you are busy, man. You are you are very busy. We are. Yeah, we're yeah. traveling a lot. The, yeah. the job is, you know, uh, the biggest challenge with the job, I think, is is the travel because yeah. it's a national show. So it's not the early mornings. You don't worry about the early mornings. Oh, look, they're not it's always right. fun. But I've had yeah. a taste of that with breakfast radio. Yeah. But. Breakfast radio, you know, you can rock up in your tracksuit pants and have cereal stains on your shirt, and, yeah. and no one knows. Well, like you have to look, and it's not anymore. Not anymore. Have you seen all the bre everything on breakfast radio now? They they do little well, snippets true. and clips, and yeah. so they're they're all made up. For me now, you, you know, I have to look semi presentable, which yeah. is a challenge for me. Like this is yeah. a big deal. The fact that I've ironed a shirt for you today. You got you to buy those shirts that you can just flick and. Yeah, is this the advertorial segment of the show? No, I wish. <laughs> if anybody <laughs> would John like, the, yeah, if anybody would like to sponsor any. Part. I mean, the problem with this show is that there's not, there's not a thing like I guess a bar or a, I mean the only thing we could probably do is get a coffee cup in here. Maybe there's not that 
that opportunity unless we throw yeah. to somebody like Moira. Yeah. But uh, well, I've, I've always been... Have you Moira yet? She's on my list. She's on my list, actually. <laughs> I, I thought she'd be an interesting guest to have. Yeah, she would be great. I yeah. saw her recently um, doing a, a chat about, you know, working with Bert, and it was fascinating. She would yeah. be a good chat. Yeah. So is this generic cityscape? Uh, this? No, well, this oh, no, that's Sydney. I can see it over no, there. this is everything. Um, this is Sydney, Brisbane. Brisbane, Story Bridge, Sydney... Well, there's Louisville Stadium is here. Oh, wow. And there is a little bit of Adelaide over here being uh, Festival Theatre. Oh, nice. And do you yeah. have to explain that every time? Does a guest ask you every time you do an episode? Probably once. Once in five series. Okay. So now it's, now it's twice. Twice okay, in five good. series, yeah. Good. Yeah, my, my kids sort of look at this like it's a... Um, a puzzle because then they can figure out what's been cut and pasted like ah yeah. look at that that antenna there's the same one as on that roof ah, there i see, I see. it's go, great yeah. i love it and, and the thing that that blew my mind is you know and i'm not sure how many of your viewers know this but this is literally your lounge room yeah this is incredible so i walked in <laughs> and then good. i'm just confronted with this that would have been better if you walked in the house and then the applause started and the music <laughs> this might break the space time continuum but do you probably mind, just for a moment just like just hand it just briefly uh, okay just to show people like this is literally Literally, <laughs> we are in the lounge room. Isn't this just incredible? So I walked in, and yeah. then there it was, the TV set, ready yeah. to go. Yeah, that's you are it. Kramer. <laughs> Come on in, Jerry. Now my next guest. I need. I need. Right, let me just make sure about that. Yeah. Is that right? You've ruined the illusion that we have people working on the show too. Yeah, everything's good. <laughs> this is great. This isn't even an ABC show, so I can't even say the budget's been cut. But we've never had a budget anyway. So yeah. and and all the guests have always been open to suggestions. We have had such a variety. It's it's just the most diverse show on TV. It's great. Or, or online, yeah. <laughs> depending where you're watching it. But um, yeah, we've had all all different backgrounds, types, people, sexes, everything. Yeah. So I think that's fantastic yeah. because then you know you le- you get a lot of different viewpoints. You hear a lot of different backgrounds on how yeah. people you know discover their passion yeah. to do what they do. I this think show's not cool. about me. This show's all about you. Right. The show's okay. about the guest. Yeah. You know, and and that's the problem that I had with big networks is like, but who are these people? Who are you? It's mm. like, well, anyway. Do you want to mention the names of those people from the networks? No, I won't. We could come up with a hit list. Yeah. Mm. No, I've got the list there. <laughs> I thought I was. I thought I was close one year. I thought I was close one year. I mean, well, it was on on Go Channel on yeah. uh, on the Nine Network for a while. Oh, nice. For a, for a series, but uh, it was midnight on a Wednesday. Yeah, it's still that, that was still tough on TV. Yeah, yeah. But years ago, I thought we were close with Channel Ten. Really? Yeah, we, we could have got them out of their financial yeah, trouble because this show costs fuck all. So, <laughs> um, yeah. But, but what yeah. had happened is I got a call from a uh, producer. I was down doing some gigs and I got a call and I thought, oh, this is it. They're calling me about the show Yeah. because I'd had a few meetings. And then uh, it was just that I'd won the contest to name <laughs> Studio 10. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, he was like, hey, you've won a big TV, this, that, and the other. And I said, yeah, but oh man. He's like, you don't sound happy. I said, well, I thought you were ringing about something else. So you won the contest to like uh, to give the show name. Yeah, so, yeah, it was a so, Twitter thing. Well, that yeah. was your opportunity. It should have been called the Darren Sanders show. Yeah, but they wouldn't have accepted <laughs> that actually yeah, and yeah, legally. Yeah. That's why this show's called this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I, it was it was close, but uh, yeah, it was funny. And then and then I said, do you want to come in and collect your prize on the show? I'm like, yeah, all right. So, <laughs> in the audience yeah got to got to you know be on the panel one oh, that's one, nice. one episode so, yeah. yeah i've been on that panel and um, yeah. i've also been stuck on a ferry with ida buttrose have you yeah what was she doing on a ferry we were um we were doing <laughs> People it's Channel me. 10. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> what are the odds of that? <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, um, they, they're dropping Survivor and yeah. uh, you'll be on four nights a week. Fair enough. All right. Look forward to that. <laughs> um, no, what happened was we were launching Wake Up, the ill-fated or pop-up breakfast show. As I oh, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And um, I was... Great so studio location. It was, yeah. yeah similar to this, similar budget to what you've done with this. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Also a little bit out of the way from the yeah, city. Yeah. I won't give your exact address, but yeah, yeah. I will on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what happened was we were... Um, Ita was on Wake Up and then right. Wake Up went straight on to Studio 10 was on after it yeah. but she needed to do that show as well but they said hey won't this be a great idea uh, if Sam kind of accompanies her or chaperones her on a on a ferry yeah. and you know goes from Manly where the Wake Up studios were to yeah. Piermont-ish yeah. Um, where 
where she was going to do that but it was the worst weather of the year that day oh, you know? okay. and we were actually stranded the, the weather oh, was yeah, too I choppy think I remember that. so we were stuck yeah. and it made the news yeah. and and then i tried to sell my story you know like my three hours stranded at sea with ida Butros yeah. and no one bought it no much one. like the show but they would now yeah exactly yeah, they would but, now but i was lovely yeah. i don't know if you've had much to do yeah, with her, but yeah. she was very easy to chat to and good fun Things that got you noticed was that the stunts, crazy stunts, or interviews you were doing, or uh, do you mean radio? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, both because um, because radio you were getting noticed that way, and then I guess to go into TV from radio is that what got you noticed? You were doing zany things. Um, like, like, how, how did how did they know who you were? I don't know the exact answer yeah. to that. What what I do know is that one of the things that I try to do, I still try to do, and it's something that I don't think you ever perfect, but you get better at it and you learn ways to, to do things, is um, with radio and then in t- I use the same sort of philosophy, I guess, with TV, is if I have a, an interview subject on, I don't want them to be asked the same questions that they've had, yeah. you know, a million times. And I... And I don't want, and I want them to remember it. And I want to, I, I see it as, as I'm sure the same. Yeah, that's, that's what I prefer to do here is to yeah. talk about stuff that, all right, we know this is what you do. And you know, we, you've got to mention it somewhere in it. But ideally, yeah. you want to talk about other stuff. To, Absolutely. That, that, I think know. that's important. Mm. And I think you, you get more out of your, your interview guests then because they come out of autopilot. Yeah. A lot of these, particularly like big Hollywood stars when they're promoting movies, they get asked, what oh, was it like working it. with such and yeah. such? Oh, so this movie's about, about blah, yeah. I bet you've experienced blah. So it's literally yeah. a formula which they get from radio to TV to print. It's the yeah. same thing. So as soon as you go in there and do something completely different, uh, I think at the very least, it snaps them out of autopilot and they're yeah. more present. They're yeah. present and then it's, most of these guys are actually really good performers. If yeah. they're, you know, comedy background, then they love that kind of, oh, okay, we're actually doing something here and it gets them moving and i think you get better you get better um content out of them that is definitely channel 10 they're very persistent jesus channel 7 now (laughs) (laughs) congratulations you're the new sunrise weather presenter this is going to be a bidding war bidding war right i've never never had so many messages in my life what what time is it was this whole exercise just to make you look popular like you organize look at all have one message come through every minute throughout the whole show first time it's happened out of all the out of all the episodes we've shot for this series yeah you still haven't put on silent and that's the professionals that we love there you go (laughs) see you're an expert there you go all right i'll do that now it'll just buzz every now my answers aren't interesting you know you can just tell me to leave no no it's great it's great i don't even know if you're answering walk out i did a walk on i mean you you can do that at the end we we can fake that we can fake it at the end that'll be in the promo (laughs) sam mac walks out of b-grade show (laughs) shot in lounge room very kind to yourself no is it all right (laughs) I know. <laughs> we could almost be done. I'm hey, happy with that. As long as we're having fun, that's yeah. the main thing. Because this is where you started. You started in community. Yeah. And, and you know, well, it's a shame that all that's going. going I agree. But it, or it's moving online because it, it's easier to sit down and turn a telly on. I think it's a bit sad that it's going. And, you know, I was just chatting recently about the Adelaide version, 44, it's called now, UCC yeah. 31. That was almost about to be basically turned off the air only a mm. couple of weeks ago, but they got a six-month extension. So, you know, yeah. at least that's something. But things aren't looking good there um, but the, the whole thing that I was trying to point out is I think it's really great as a I guess a breeding ground but yeah. also for people to make mistakes try things develop their skills mm. hone their you know their characters and their craft well you don't have a producer looking down at you going no you can't do that I did a series I guess along these lines not as fancy as that but lights camera <laughs> action which is available on YouTube and I did a couple of seasons of that and and loved it like yeah. that was a really great creative outlet and you know worked with some really interesting fun people through yeah. that so yeah I think it's it's really important Adelaide people Hugh Sheridan Hugh Sheridan good actor yeah and uh, I know his sister Zoe did you Zoe Sheridan of yeah. course you do if you're from Adelaide you, yeah, there's yeah. a good well, chance you, you would she's also very talented yeah. I always knew Anthony Lepaglia was was an Australian or yes. from Adelaide uh, McAuliffe like you said yeah. um, HG Nelson oh, Frank, well, Frank Woodley oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not these are some great names I yeah. didn't know that Frank Woodley yeah I thought he was Melbourne. No, oh, well, okay. well, uh, it depends what you what you learn on the the internet. Um, I trust everything I read on Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, musicians, eh? Musicians, there's a lot of musicians. Yeah, yeah. Guy Sebastian. Yes, yes, guy. The beards. Glenn Shorrick. Uh, I didn't know um, Hilltop Hoods were. Oh yeah, ab- absolutely. Yeah. I'm in the rap game. I released a hit single with Nikki Webster, so right across the, yeah. the Hilltop Hoods. Actually, uh, she was on a cruise I was working on. Really? Yeah. As, as performing? No, no, just, just on holiday, oh, I think. Great. It was right after you did that 
Oh, yes, strawberry I remember kisses. She was going on. That was for her 30th birthday. Was it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. No, I was on and that were cruise. were you the entertainment? I was the entertainment. I'm not treat. sure she saw my show, though, because... Oh. They were watching another show. They were down the front, and everyone was like, <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, she got a daughter, son? She does, daughter, Skylar. Yeah. Really, yes. yeah, really young. So, yeah, she was running around dancing to all the nice. all the other stuff. Um, and then I think the biggest probably, uh, David Hicks, the uh, Guantanamo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Is he under comedian or nah, musician? No, he's, uh, he's under other. And also on other. the Cocaine Cassie. So, wow, quite the, oh, she, quite she? the collection we've got there. You're really selling Adelaide here, Darren. Well, you know where to go for a good time anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there are a lot of big landmarks here that people always talk about, the aren't there? The pig statues, the Moles Balls. Yeah. yeah. Colonel Light. Colonel Light. You've got pointing to get there towards pointing. the Crazy Horse. Yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> Shannon Hole. Shannon Noel being kicked out of the Crazy yeah. Horse. I just called him Shannon Hole, which Shannon. is kind of appropriate. I, given thought, what I thought you were doing that deliberately <laughs> with your puns. All right. Not that good. <laughs> it was very quick, very off the mark. <laughs> yeah, Magic Mountain. And oh, yeah, I know Magic Mountain. Yeah. Wasn't there that old um, myth about they used to put razor blades on the slide? There you go. Yeah, there you go. A rumour was a razor blade was found on one of the, And I remember that as a kid. And you know that, what's going to happen here? We're going to get a gig for uh, South Australian tourism after everything we've just spoken That'll about. That'll be fine. We could do the wineries. That's <laughs> easy. Cocaine Cassie. Yeah. Kicked out of a strip club. Watch out. Don't get slashed by razor blades on a slide. Come to Adelaide. It sounds good. <laughs> It sounds like the cross. It sounds well, like King's know, Cross on Saturday. We've dropped down the rankings. Remember, we used to be the murder capital of the world. Wow, who's taken over I that? I think we were that for a year or so. Um, I don't know who's taken over, but yeah, I'm pretty sure we've dropped. But you know, it doesn't say that on our number plates anymore. Sadly. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is that? The premier, the premier uh, festival state? state? Ah, festival state, of yeah. course. Yes, love the festivals. And we're, we're owning that at the moment. Fringe festival, massive. Yeah. yeah. Um, Warham Adelaide, great. Um, yeah. The cabaret festival is getting bigger. I, I believe the cabaret festival in Adelaide is the biggest cabaret specific festival in the world now really so we're doing pretty well but it all happens obviously in that two yeah, month period yeah clips yeah. 500 is that yeah. a festival probably not well i, I remember the grand prix that was a festival yeah that Man. was good yeah that's good can't believe they lost that yeah no we'll get over that eventually <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll get the grand final move to adelaide yeah well yeah. you never know this year the crows and power both up there mm. your dad of course crows background yeah yeah i uh, i went to the two grand finals 20 odd years ago um, nice. but I've, but I've, I've lived in the Crows formed when I lived overseas so when I moved back to Australia I actually settled in Sydney and I used to go watch all the Swans oh, games oh really was that the days of Warwick Kappa yeah yeah there was me and the, the six dancing girls in the outer they were they were on some sort of podium and <laughs> right. I, I used to know some of those girls so I'd just sit there and they'd get up and dance every really? maybe, maybe six times a game amazing yeah there weren't many goals scored back then <laughs> <laughs> but it was a good it was a good feeling it was good 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 feeling that they came Came, and then to, to watch a team that you follow win a grand final, yeah. that's a nice feeling. But then, and I said this to Will Anderson, the year after it feels like, you know what, something's lot, something's gone now. Like Even though it's nice, the, but... You, anti-climax or... Yeah, the first it was always good being the underdog. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then all of a sudden you win, you go, eh, Yeah, okay. I think you're right. So then the follow-up now, yeah, but the success now is great for the Swans. Um, but then I said to the Bulldogs, you said, no, you don't want to win. I told him, I said, you don't want to win a grand final. It'll feel much better if you're always chasing it and you never get it. It's like the tension in a romantic movie, you know, because once it happens, yeah, you then it's win. like, oh, you don't watch the sequel of that movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's good that one. All goes, I was it all there, goes actually. Around. I was yeah. at that grand final, the Bulldogs win, and mm. yeah, it was, it was pretty special yeah. just to see... So many grown men crying. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was, it was always going to happen. I think yeah. that, that that grand final was always going to be the bulldogs from the start. Yeah, they just gained momentum, didn't they? Yeah. This is this is our new segment where we do sports Switch updates sport. that are about eight months out of date. <laughs> that's, that's that's fine. In a minute, we'll go to the weather. <laughs> and congratulations to Leicester, who won the English Premier League for the first time. That was a long time ago as well. <laughs> well, I, I think that's I think that's about it. Is that it? Yeah, I think so. So I just let myself out, or well, you might as well go out the same way you came, um, and unless you just want to tell us what the weather's going to be like tomorrow. <laughs> I gotta go. Yeah, okay. Great to see you. No worries, you too. Thanks. It's gonna be hot. <laughs> Coming up on the next episode of the Darren Sanders Show. I knew it was time to retire. Actually, when I was halfway through a game, and I was walking to a scrum, and I was humming. The Wiggles tune, so the boys were, the boys were watching the Wiggles. I was in my head and I thought, oh shit, it's time to give it away now. Which one? Fruit salad? Uh, <laughs> yummy, yummy. <laughs> potato on potato, so. The Darren Sanders Show was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. Mike Goldman speaking.